Yes. Now running? Yes, yes. Yes, my dear friends, we have seen now that what GMC is and what is purpose of GMC. GMC is connecting one part maritime industry, another part seafarers together and serving with empathy, love and enthusiasm and serving maritime industry and doing all the best to connect these two parts with empathy, love and enthusiasm. Now we have our speaker. First, our speaker, I would like to welcome Captain Pradeep Chawla. Captain Pradeep Chawla is one of the veterans in maritime industry. And he has joined C in 1974. He is the group managing director for quality health safety and environment and training with the anglo Stan and Union Group. He is the chairman of Global Med Association, which is an association of over 60 training institutes in the world. He has in the past served as a vice president and council member of the Nautical Institute UK. He is the, he is the chairman of the Standard Club Safety and Loss Advisory Committee Asia. He is member of the expert group of BIMCO BIM Key Performance Indicators Program. Captain Chawla, we, uh, welcome on stage. And I would like to ask you, you have so long experience in maritime industry. Can you please share secret of your leadership? Okay, I think, uh, I don't know if you want me to do it. I had prepared a presentation on leadership, but if you just want to do a question answer thing, I'm fine with that too. So what would you prefer? I do the presentation or we just talk? I think uh, better we talk because all of our speakers are more ready to talk. You know, okay, and this, fine. Will be, this will be give more uh, us time to ask you questions. Yeah, not a problem. Audiences. Okay, so can you repeat your question? Yeah, what is secret of your leadership? Yeah, I don't think I have any secrets. I don't think uh, there is any mystery about anything in leadership. Uh, leadership, I think, is a combination of uh, our training and our personality. Uh, there is as the psychologists would like to say, we are all a product of nature and nurture. So as we go along in life, we gain some experience, we make some mistakes, we learn from them. 
And as long as we remain humble, keep learning from our own mistakes, try to learn from other people's mistakes, treat people with respect and empathy and love, and also look at their good qualities rather than their bad qualities and try to find as a leader, one needs to you know, get the team members to perform to the highest level. So the job of a leader, I think, is to create that environment where people want to give their best and they give it happily. Uh, so people follow you for different things as a leader. One is that they don't have a choice. So, you know, you are the boss and hence everybody has to follow you. But then you don't get the full motivation of the people. The next stage, I would say, is when people start to respect you a little bit you get to know them you interact with them and then they say that okay you know it's fine for me i like this guy i can follow him the next stage is kind of they say that okay uh, you know this person has done a lot for the organization or for the industry and hence they like to follow you they want to listen to you and the final stage is i think when people actually follow you because of what you have done for them. That means you've been a good mentor to them. You have treated them with respect. You have allowed them to become better leaders and grown their careers along, you know, with the unselfish motive. That's when people really start to follow you. So it's not for the individual to call himself or herself a leader. A leader is when other people call you a leader, then you are a leader. Otherwise, you have no right to be called a leader. That would be my answer. Thank you. Yeah, good points. Uh, empathy, loyalty, as well. Help each other and not to come on. That's a great point. Captain Chawla, uh, what tips you would like to share with youth that they have to imbibe in themselves to become successful leader okay i think the first one is that your motivation comes from within you nobody else can motivate you other people can inspire you maybe and uh, you know even osama bin laden inspired some people to do the kind of things that they did so but the motivation to do something need really comes from within so the first thing I would say for young people is to have an ambition, think where you want to go and then work towards it. Uh, there is a matter of a um, little bit of chance and luck in everybody's life. Uh, scientific people don't like to believe in luck. They try to say that everything is in the control. But I come from the Indian philosophical background of in, you know, the Indian culture. And I would say there is something called a little bit of something called luck. You can call it whatever, right time, right place, just being there. Other people in out of their kindness help you along, but there is very much a factor of luck. But since the luck is not known to a young person, the young person should have ambition, have a drive for learning and interest in learning, in improving oneself continuously. Be willing to work hard and not think that quite a Quite often, young people don't like to do jobs which they consider as below their dignity to do it. But what they don't get it is that even the simplest of the jobs, there is some learning in it. Uh, as an example, when we were young cadets and we were told to do chipping, the idea from the senior officers was not to use us as ABs throughout. They knew that we would be a cadet only for a short time and then we would become officers. The idea was to teach us about how long does it take, how heavy is the job, so that when we become chief officers and we give the job to the ABs, then we know how much can be done and how much is achievable. So if it would not be, if a person has never done a particular job, then they do not understand that job fully. And that's the reason why in most old culture way of doing things, 
people were already always in the family businesses they were made to do all kinds of jobs till they learned everything about the job before they took over their father's or mother's business same thing in the corporate world you need to start small understand each and every task as you go along and remember that you are being judged on your attitude to work at every task that is given to you the boss may not be seeming to watch but the boss is always watching to say what's your attitude to work of course he knows that that job could be done by an ab could be done by the ordinary seaman but he's giving it to a cadet with the idea that are you learning it with the right framework and later on in life sometimes you go and appreciate for the people who teach you those things as an example your anchor chain gets all knotted up if as a young officer you have participated with the boatswain in clearing an anchor chain which is looped up then one day as a chief officer you will appreciate you will have that memory to be able to do that uh, properly and as successfully if you have not tried to learn it from the boatswain at that time then very likely that as a chief officer you will also fail to solve that problem successfully so passion to learn ability to be working hard uh, keeping an open mind and always working with the colleagues teamwork is absolutely an essential thing in life nobody likes nobody is going to call you a leader if you are shouting screaming kind of thing yes you can say hitler was also a leader but then he didn't end up too well so that ability to work with other people is another quality that leadership is requiring that for the young people i would say that try and work with other people as a good team thank you yeah thank you uh, captain chola yeah it's great point that you have made that about we team leaders we with team so always cooperate each other that's great also captain chola you have transition from ship to shore can you share in few lines what main challenges you have faced that okay. great challenge that okay the first challenge i would say is when you come as a captain of a ship you are used to being the boss of the ship and then the first day in your office you pretty much become a cadet again because while you think you know a lot of things when you come into the environment of the shore people who have been 10 20 years in the office for them you are a brand new cadet and that change is probably the one challenge that i remember that mentally it took me some time i would say probably a month uh, because you were not used to being treated that way so you know the managing director is too busy to talk to you come back tomorrow or come back later because as a captain it's the other way around right i mean you call anyone and they come at whatever time of the day or night you call them so that transition one has to prepare mentally for it in my case i would say that i had decided that come what may i'm not going to go back to sea and that helped that determination helped in the first few days of that feeling that i got that it looks like i'm a cadet again the second part of the transition i would say is balancing your home life with your work life because there is so much more to learn when you come into the shore job you really start to understand the overall ship management business or shipping business and you realize very quickly that your knowledge is not much and hence you need to put in a lot of extra hours so then you have to manage wife and children expectations along with your own desire to do well in your job or sure so you and typically you end up working a lot more than 8 hours a day and uh, then you need to do this balance because your family is saying you didn't you know we left sea life because we wanted you to have more time with the family and now suddenly you are even working more number of hours than you were working on the ship for example in my case my wife sailed with me for 9 years so she knew what sea life was so that transition also takes time and the last one i think is the 
to learn to value the networking which is required in the shore industry. Uh, suddenly from 20 people, you are interacting with 200 people. And after a few years, you're interacting with 2000 or 3000 people. And then to be able to utilize that uh, breadth of knowledge of the other people to learn from them and to be able to understand that every individual that you meet from another company, from your competitors, from your clients, they are also extremely knowledgeable people and you need to be able to see their viewpoint and learn from them in order to become better at your own job. So three things. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Chawla. Uh, yeah, good point that you have mentioned. Balance in life, very much important. That we balance, as I say, brain, business. Yeah brain, body, business. If we balance, then we succeed. Otherwise, no means of life. So thank you very much for your uh, this was great talk with you. And uh, you have responded all questions very nicely, properly. And I'm sure that all our youth and whoever they are available, they will all get benefits from this. Now I would like to Introduce our second guest speaker, as well. He's also veteran in maritime industry, Mr. Sunil Kapoor. Mr. Mr. Sunil Kapoor started his career as short, I understand. Isn't it, Mr. Kapoor, in 1996? No, uh, I, okay, yeah, I started my career ashore. Yeah, yeah, in 1996, you have started your career with full dedication to fleet management, Hong Kong. And uh, Mr. Kapoor joined in fleet management, Hong Kong, as a technical superintendent. Over the years, Mr. Kapoor has risen to the ranks of Fleet management to his present role as the director of the com company Cyprus Corporation, Fleet Management Limited Cyprus. So you have transitioned from Hong Kong to in uh, Cyprus in 2007. Yeah. And Mr. Kapoor is member of Board of Governors of Cyprus Maritime Academy affiliated to University of Nicosia. He is also a board member of the Cyprus Marine Club in Limassol. He is also the board member of Cyprus Sitting Chamber. Mr. Kapoor sits on the technical committee of all the major classification society. Welcome, Mr. Kapoor. Mr. Kapoor, I would like to ask you, you have a so long, so vast experience. And when you have transitioned from Hong Kong to Cyprus, unknown place, what challenges you have faced in this unknown country for you first time? Well, very interesting question. Uh, as Mr. Chawla said, when you are coming from ship to shore and you are with the people whom you know, at least there is some sort of a familiarity. And in 2007, I was given a task to come to Cyprus. To be very frank, I had never even visited, neither bothered to look at the map where this country is. So I flew on 14th May 2007 to Cyprus to set up this company. Totally different people, different country, different language. The only good thing was India, Hong Kong, and Cyprus was the colony of British. So we drove on the same side. So that made life a little easier while driving in Cyprus. Yeah, so uh, when right from the day one, as a person living in India and you go and to the hostel and you see new faces, there is something is there at the back of mind, which is the fear. And once you overcome fear, then things starts becoming clearer and better. So same thing was there when you go on the ship and from the ship when you come ashore. So when I came to Cyprus, of course, with new faces, new challenges, new things, 
I was able to overcome that fear. And I realized if I need to do, this is a challenge which is given to me. If I need to succeed, first thing I should do is to overcome my fear. And then, then the rest of the things will follow automatically. I had a plan what needs to be done. I knew how to set up the system. Of course, initially very difficult, but over the years, we are able to set up the office and we have a number of people working in the office and we provide a good ship management service from this island. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, it's good uh, that you have shared that we have to always overcome our fear. Overcome fear, achieve success, or forget fear, achieve success. So that, that's uh, great to know that you have also overcame through this, and this is good for our youth and whoever has transitioned from shore to ship, even from shore to shore, from small to big, it's a good to know. So, can you please uh, share your secret of success in Cyprus, except overcome fear? Yes. Yeah, I, the very people, uh, they uh, equate, or I would also, in my early years, thought that the success is money, power, and status. But success over the year, this definition changes when you start understanding. Now, with maturity and the place I am, success for me, could be fulfilling my maximizing my potential or helping other to have a meaningful way of life so uh, one of the things which i feel is my strong is that i am quite transparent and honest in all my professional relationship because we are in people's business and we need to commit we need that other people who are in front of us they should realize that the person they are dealing is very transparent, honest, and committed. Of course, uh, there are a few other things. And once they understand the person, then the business starts coming in. It's not something because we are dealing with people, is business people. The ship owner who's giving you a ship has to know you, understand you. The people in the office should understand that for whom they are working, is he a reliable guy? And also all the people who are in the shipping industry need to have a trust in you. So this is one of the points. Second is we are working in a very complex um, environment and situation. There are many, many things that are happening. And I'm able to simplify these complex situation into very simple things. I can come up with very simple solutions, which Many people, they like it, and they feel that this is a good thing in today's world where we can save money and can utilize things in an easy way. These are small changes which can bring about maximum effect to many people's advantage. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this uh, great point that you have that I can say, live in harmony. If you live in harmony, you are enjoying life. Otherwise, you know, money, success, whatever definition that could be, not make sense if you are not living in harmony or balanced way, or your family is happy, you are happy, and you are contented here spiritually. That is more important. Yeah, actually, here I would like to add one word. Uh, 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 because we are in shipping, and we are answerable and also there are so many ships who look up at, at us for various problems. Uh, I, I feel uh, that for me this is a way of life. I do not say that there is a difference between working in the office or being in the house. There is something. It's 
very, very way of life. I could be having a dinner and I could get a phone call. I will leave it. My family will understand that there is something need to be done. I would come back. So I have dovetailed my business life and my uh, uh, domestic life in a very, very systematic way. So we don't get excited. We don't get anything. It could be a Friday evening. We have arranged a party and I have to fly. Doesn't matter. So, so for me, for many years, when I came ashore, I realized that this is a very tough business and it requires a lot of uh, our attention. So if you want to succeed and if you want to have a long career in shipping, you have to treat this as a way of life. There's nothing different. Yeah, I agree with you. That celebration required celebration. When you achieve something, celebrate. And this way, when we celebrate, we appreciate ourselves. So celebration is very important. And you are also a person who combine business and pleasure. That's great. Any influencing words of wisdom for team leaders? Mr. Kapoor. Uh, uh, I, for, well, um, first of all, uh, the most important thing is today's uh, world is to listen. We are so, uh, uh, in our own world, we are there that we want to uh, just tell every time, in, even when we were growing up, we thought leaders are the one who gives order, who ask us what to do and everything. But things have changed. We need to listen. And we are work working with a lot of uh, different nationalities, different people, different background, different languages. And I realize it's so important to listen to them, listen what they are saying, what is why they are saying. So this is, I think, is a, uh, a thing which people should do. And another thing which I feel is that one of the greatest, I would say, the management system, which I call PCS, is that plain common sense. You could have greatest of the things, but if you are not going to use your plain common sense, then you are at a disadvantage. So let's always stick to the basics. So that is going to take us very far. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Kapoor. Yeah, this great point you have had that listening. Listening is virtue, as I see. We have two ears and one mouth. So speak less, listen more. And also that uh, you have heard about common sense. Yeah, unlikely animal, we have common sense. So common sense, as more as we use, as more we get, get over any challenges and succeed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kapoor. This was a great talk and uh, you have shared a lot of your own experience. Those lines very much, uh, I am sure that inspire our youth as well who are already in maritime industry for a long time. Now we have our speaker, as well, GMC Ambassador, Mr. Gurvinder Chopra. Mr. Gurvinder Chopra, as I know, earlier also was working in anglo Eastern, right, Gurvinder? No? I, <coughs> when I sailed for 10 years and all those 10 years with the Shipping Corporation of India. Ah, Shipping Corporation of India. So you are not, uh, no problem. So Gurvinder had a degree in marine engineering, served for 10 years, as he said, with company like CSA Group Canadian Standards Association, Lord's Register, and BSI, British Standards Institution, in their location in India, UK, USA, and Canada. Gurvinder is currently working as a vice president, standards and regulation for Electro Federation Canada in not-for-profit association of Canadian electrical manufacture. That's novel thing, great. You are doing distributors and manufacturing agent. 
Gurvinder has also undertaken advanced diploma in business administration from MC Master M Chester, yeah, University. American <laughs> Operations Management Certification Program from Loyola University, Chicago, and recently completed completed a program on sustainable business strategy from Harvard Business School. Welcome, uh, Gurvinder. Gurvinder, you are mute. Thank you, Vinay. Thanks for yeah. the introduction. Uh, uh, yeah. As you remember, during the few years before, before writing my book, The Art of Leadership, I have contacted you. And we have long discussion with you. And you have shared a lot of things which inspired me and even motivated me. So, Gurvinda, can you please tell who is your role model in leadership? And why? The role model. Yes. <laughs> um, see, what, what I have learned is that not everyone can have all the qualities of a leader. Everyone is, or rather, should be learning. Right? We are all learning every day. And if, if someone says, I have, I have all the attributes of a leader, it will be interesting to know about him and her. Um, I mean, I would not like to refer to someone that we would have read about him or her in the books. Sometimes media writers may have shown the best side of that person. Few leaders which have always motivated me are, of course, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Nelson Mandela. Uh, Bene, we have spoken about these leaders many times. And um, starting with, I would say, uh, Bene, you have been instrumental in listening when we were talking, right? Um, about these leadership roles. Uh, you have written so many books trying to inspire people. That has been, of course, very motivating and, and it has always motivated me. I would like to make a mention of, and, and I'll tell you the reason why. I'd like to make a mention about my manager who I reported after 24 years of my career, right? Who has stood out for me uh, from the leadership perspective. And um, maybe I would like to start from the end result and then provide you the reason why? This gentleman was away on sick leave for more than three months. Uh, he was uh, regional vice president operations of Canada and entire team reporting to him of around 10 direct reports and 800 employees. They worked without any effect on the performance or executives feeling any need to have a temporary fill in position. Everything worked out well for those three months when he was away. And what I feel is that the reasons and the attributes which he has, uh, he's uh, not with that company anymore, but he is around. He has empowered, he had empowered each one of us uh, to undertake the decisions we needed to take. For each one of us, you know, we had a responsibility of around 15 million uh, each uh, per person. And uh, we knew how and where to put our efforts. He always patiently listened to us, you know, kept us motivated, whether it was accompanying me to greet my team for their success. He used to come along with me to those specific tables, meeting someone on his or her birthday. If someone had any issue in the family, he was there. So I feel these are some of the attributes which I like in this, in this role model of mine. Um, and I have been narrating this story to many whomever I have met and this question has come up. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh... Yeah, you have shared about these leaders, Nelson Mandela, you know, mm -hmm. Steve Jobs. So, yeah, it's, it's inspiring their story. And I'm agree uh, that uh, whatever you have told now and whatever you have said about your colleague, that's, that's great to become team leader. As I say, if you are leader and your team know more than you, then you are a great leader. Right, it means that you have empowered your absolutely empowered your team in a such a way that they have a right to be decisive and decisive. You know, decision not like this that uh, you know someone tell you then you take decision. You be decisive yourself. Today absolutely. in maritime industry, what I see, uh, 
main important, you know, and great challenge, people are not decisive. They are listening, but not that they are listening, you know, to take decision. So that is a issue today, Gurinder. And uh, you have shared uh, nice things that, uh, you know, uh, even your, this uh, colleague was not available, and you all have not feel that he is not available. Yeah. That's also great shelter he has done. And this is a, we know as a, you know, empathy, that you are all empathetic. Because empathy also this is both sides. So, Gurvinder, tell me, please, before coming to Canada, when you get to Canada, you have uh, uh, when you get to Canada, in which year? This was uh, January of 2005. 2005. And you get here as a leader. You, you get command of company, right? We are working thousands of, uh, I mean, hundreds of your subordinates. Yeah. So what challenges you have faced in Canada? Because Canada, you came first time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So Bine, I think uh, our other presenters have also mentioned, uh, Sunil also said all of the, the, the move from Hong Kong to Cyprus. In fact, when, I was, when, he, when you were saying Sunil about move from Hong Kong to Cyprus, I, I was thinking even going to Hong Kong would have been a challenge. Yes, there, there is a big marine fraternity, there is no doubt, but then um, it's, it's out of the place, isn't it? I, I fully agree with you. Uh, I am actually uh, passed out from a marine engineering college and I'm, I'm 1981 pass out. And when I came to Hong Kong, the every, I was the junior most person. The everyone was the senior and very senior people. So for a couple, for almost a year, I was overawed. And I was the one who would even during the uh, tea time, other thing, I would go down and bring tea or biscuits or something for all the seniors. So I was completely overawed and it took me long time to overcome and give my point of view or what I'm thinking and how to run the shapes of our, because initially it was just, just not possible because you see Absolutely. them as, a, as a great people with the, you know, like I said, the success means at higher position. So you are always looking at them. Maybe they were wrong, but still you did not have the guts to challenge them. <laughs> so, Exactly that, uh, Bine. So that was the challenge which I faced when I landed here. Uh, one of the things was when I joined Lloyd's here in Canada, when I landed, uh, I was, of course, the only uh, brown person from Asia. And uh, to set up that space for yourself and, and make yourself uh, you know, visible was a, was a challenge. Um, you know, many people who come here, they, they face these challenges where because they have not, they are not used to the culture, they are not used to the surroundings. It takes them some time to get used to, number one, and also to learn what is needed. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Captain Chavla has mentioned about uh, being on the ship, you are the master, you know everything, you are com in command. A lot of things change during um, this whole course of time. You learn what success is. Sunil, you mentioned about how things have changed. The, with maturity, a lot of things come up. You, uh, with age, lot, you learn a lot of things. And uh, this is what I have done, making sure that what, what people are around, what are they thinking. So it took me some time, maybe a few months. Uh, the advantage was I had a shipping career. I was with Lloyd's India, where we were exposed to different people from different countries. And um, yes, but with hard work, sincerity, and when people around you, around you they see that yes, uh, you are dedicated to the work, which sometimes we feel that it is not the case with many other people from other other uh, origins. I think uh, it, it, that was the story where um, uh, I started building up my credibility in this country, and I'm, I'm able to achieve what what I have been able to achieve so far. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you, Ugurvinder. Uh, it was interesting to know about uh, your leadership traits and what you have shared. 
and as I see that from Captain Chawla, we uh, today listen what leaders know for leaders important to be empathetic. From Mr. Kapoor, that leader should listen. Heard from you, the leaders should be team leaders. Thank you very much. Now we have question answer session. And this is our friendly talk. So whoever want to ask any question on leadership or whatever interested, you are welcome one by one, please. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I want to ask you uh, one question. Like most of the questions, uh, really, uh, you explain in the best way. Like, what is the what's the most important risk you took and why? Whom you are addressing? Uh, like Captain Chawla, sir, uh, can answer or any of the any of one of the panelists. Okay, Captain Chawla. The biggest risk that I took. Yes, I think, sir. Uh, if you want a light answer, then it was getting married. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we, I was dating her for seven years, so that was not a risk. But uh, I would say that every time that a human being makes a change, there are certain risks. And mm -hmm. the decisions that we make are based on whatever we are doing at that time and what are the circumstances around that. So at many stages of life, you have to make decisions. And I would say that nothing is really a risk. It's a matter of choices. Uh, in hindsight, you could say that, you know, there was, you didn't identify a particular risk in the decision you take. But I approach life one day at a time. And my logic is that on a given day in the morning, whatever are the choices I have to make, I make according to that. And whether that turns out to be good or bad, that later on you get to know. So I never really think too much about, you know, Risk. too hard Thank about you, that. Okay. Yeah, good points, uh, Captain Chawla. In morning, we have to ask whether we want to be happy or we want to be misery. So we have to make our own choice. If we want to be happy, of course, we have to start a smile from morning. So any more questions? Welcome, welcome. Ask question. You have a uh, so one more. Question. If you allow, I can ask one more question. Ask. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Uh, I think this is the best platform to put this question uh, from our young seafarers. As like as we are progressing towards the autonomous ship, we are a lot of uh, on a lot of platforms. We are now listening about it. And the matam unions are now struggling, you know, how they will deal with the, uh, this job risk. So, but I feel there is a lack of leadership in maritime education. Uh, still, we are revolving around the 1980s uh, things. So, it is really, uh, it is a concern or it is like our lack of vision in youth, like which demotivates them most of the time. To go, you know, to happily study like uh, whatever the course is there. So, any of the panelists like? So, Mr. Kapoor, Mr. Kapoor can answer. Is you see, uh, changes are taking place. Changes took place when we joined the shipping industry, and I'm sure all my Gurvinder and Pradeep will also say when we passed off from Rajendra or DMT, we just learned basics. And we learned. This is for deck deck officers. So this okay. is like mainly for deck. Okay, for deck officers, I'm sure Pradeep will be able to say more. But on a whole, things are evolving. That time also they were evolving. We learned new systems of training came in, new courses came in. There was an advantage. In our time, the contracts were long. And the seniors actually took the juniors under their wings and they mentored. That was the greatest advantage because I would I did my first ship as 13 months, second ship of, again, three ships together, almost I got another 12 months. So uh, we learned a lot on board the ship. But today, I think that learning is shifted. People are trying to give more training. 
ashore than on shore because they expect you to start performing from the day one. So I'm sure things will evolve once the technology also stabilizes because many, many things are happening. And this last one and a half, two years, there's a lot of changes are taking place. And uh, the new system are coming, virtual training is coming, many things, inspections are coming, different kind of inspection. We have not seen these before. So people will be trained. People will perform better than what we performed earlier. And uh, things will stabilize. I'll leave it to me to elaborate more on that. Uh, thanks, sir. I think the continuation of that, I would say that every new change brings about new opportunities. So ship management industry, as an example, has completely changed to people from different origins now being ashore in comparison to the nationalities who were managing ships earlier. And that came about because the seafaring part changed from OECD countries to Asian countries. Similarly, all the digitalization changes, decarbonization changes, all these buzzwords that you're hearing, they are producing new opportunities. I mean, I see a lot of young engineers now who don't want to be vessel managers. They want to be doing something in the environment management space. There is a lot more entrepreneurship on the marine industry that is happening now compared to 20 years ago. And on the digitalization side for the nautical people, the job of a navigator is getting easier and easier with these modern systems that we use. And it's also bringing in, there will be a stage where there will be drone operators kind of people who will be navigating or supporting ships which are ashore. And then there will be autonomous ships and there will still be people supporting that from ashore from various things. They, they might not have been gone out to sea and faced Wind Force 9 or something, but they would get trained in somehow in that too. And so it's not really, and in terms of your question about are we teaching for, from the 1980s, I don't think so. STCW is being revised now. It will come out probably in 2030 uh, in the way it's heading in IMO now because of COVID, the last HTW session, there wasn't much of work done. But it, it does try to say technology will always stay ahead of regulation. That's innovation. Uh, innovator breaks away from the present situation and he finds new answers to the new problems that keep happening. Yes, technology will bring in its own challenges and its own problems, but now we are trying to solve problems like decarbonization, right? De bringing machinery data ashore, helping the ship staff by people in the office with a decision support system, uh, remote cameras where we can assist people with the problem. Similarly, going into the future, all these things will come into the uh, teaching and learning syllabus. I just participated in a panel three years ago with India and their syllabus is already completely revised for including dual fuels for the engineers and to include a lot of this uh, modern uh, weather routing systems and navigation systems. So I see my friend, Professor Musov is here. He's one of the leading people from Ukraine in helping STCW changes and uh, working in the International Association of Maritime Lecturers, I am the Maritime Universities and Global Met. So there are many, many very intelligent people like him who are thinking for the future and trying to change the syllabus. So no, we are not training for the 80s. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Shamule Ili, you have a question? Ask. Okay, Nitis, come on. Good evening, sir. Am I loud and clear? Yes, go ahead. So I'm a cadet from Indian Maritime University, Kolkata, Mbass, which was earlier known as DMET Kolkata. So as we know, we have a discussion over the leadership and the future leaders. So the very important term that comes in or the factor that comes in is the failures. We do face failures and as a leader, we face the failures of our teammates and we, sometimes we get blamed for it. So what is the scope that you give to your juniors or the cadets or the coming up, the scope of failure for them or is it going to affect the 
means because we cannot be really loose on upon loose on this topic and at the same time we should have to give some scope for ourselves and for the team itself so how the people or the panelists sitting here have coped with these things in their life and how this improved their to be a better leader today can you please throw some light on it very good questions i can start on it failure actually uh, i was once sitting with a gentleman industrialist from israel and i was talking about israel and you know india and cyprus other countries and he said one of the most important thing in their dna in israel and the people of israel is that they take failure as a good thing they celebrate failure because they say when we are doing new things they are bound to be failed and so many things we are doing in israel that many people will fail but we do not ask them to become depressed we do not shut down their factories we continue supporting them and that's the reason if you see the entrepreneurship in israel is the highest the number of nobel prize winners are highest in israel many things are happening in israel where they innovate in many many things and that sentence and what he the essence of meaning actually it touched me and even now in our office when we are working i'm not saying that 100% of the time we are right we fail because we don't understand the situation or we may have made a general mistake so we do not take the failure as something to mourn and something to shut down because we need to run our ships we take it as a learning point we take it as a challenge ki how to use this failure to our advantage how to make it best for ourselves you know so that next time if such a similar instance come how we can do it better or even if it is very close to what we did earlier last time in previous time how to improve on it so failures is part of a life right from the day when we gave our examination for dmat we were not sure we'll get it we got into dmat actually i wanted to go to rajendra they shifted me to dmat i was so let down but then i made a career being an engineer then you want to go as in during my time there was a recession i was this chief ticket i was made to work as a third engineer and he said oh this is the bullshit we must leave and go back this cannot happen but i we stuck so disadvantage problems obstacles everything will come it cannot be bed of roses you know there will be thorns and you have to overcome you have to become stronger every time so this is my piece of advice don't become disheartened use these failures to your advantage to learn more to prepare yourself for the future i will ask other people to i think just adding to this uh, sunil uh, here is where the leadership comes into effect i mean if you are a leader and if you are more trying to motivate your team there is a failure this failures are bound to happen so uh, you know i was reading a book where it says that if there is a failure you look at a mirror as a leader you look at a mirror and take the responsibility of that failure and if you, if your team has succeeded look at the team and 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 uh, give them the credit so uh, failures come only thing is uh, what i have seen is sunil you will maybe agree and uh, pradeep you also will as a, as a mariner i think we have been uh, very cautious about taking risks we evaluate the risks properly take uh, risk management into effect and then of course if there are failures there are failures we have to we have to support our team and keep the ship running yeah right point will in that because we, we have to not uh, punish for failure we have to guide them this is a you know team leader we, we have question from nicola nicola you would like to ask this question or you would like that i say nicola anyway she is asking what do you wish you had known when you first start yeah nicola go ahead with your question Um, it was just really, if you go back to when you first started on the vessel, what one piece of advice would you give yourself or new seafarers about to step on the first vessel? My answer would be that I would probably have tried to learn a lot more than what I learned because I think I wasn't 
sufficiently responsible enough because at that age, when you come out at the age of 18 out to sea and suddenly you start, you know, touring around the whole world, uh, there's a lot of distractions that happen and that would takes away time from what you should have learned. So quite often uh, when you go back on the same kind of a ship after 10 years, you say, yeah, something like this did happen on my first ship too. But I don't really remember clearly. So be more focused is what I would have, I have learned from that. Uh, but yes, when I was 18, I wasn't so focused. Thank you. It was the wine, women and song kind of thing at age 18, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, any more question? Anyone would like to ask? Actually, uh, for Nicole, I would also add one more thing. When you're going on ship as of today, know your ship and know your people also. In our time, we were forced to know our people. Now the contracts are very short. Many times when you're talking to the people on board the ship, they're only talking by rank. Oh, he's my chief engineer, captain or AB or boss, and they don't even know their names. You know, In case of incident, when we're asking, who's this third officer? And they are looking around who this third also. So I, my advice would be to know your ship, know your people, and be safe. These days, a lot can happen to the youngsters if they are very, very, you know, experimenting on board the ship, doing various things. You need to be very safe these days and have to also work as, as a team. You cannot be just doing things on your own, alone somewhere. Great advice. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Anirban Vadra, do you have any question? Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening to everybody, sir. Uh, so I just have got two basic questions to our esteemed panelists over here. So my first question is, sir, what I have personally experienced, like as a leader, as a manager, I have seen in one particular means of working where I have been told that since you are a leader or you are a senior manager, you should not yourself involve in working with your own hands and being with your other engineers or other, uh, you know, uh, uh, officers who are on board. Rather, since you are an overall manager, you should be in a position that you are able to see all the jobs which I can concentrate on all the other jobs. That is one point of view. I have also seen another point of view where a senior has told me that, no, you should yourself, as uh, Sir also mentioned earlier, you should yourself involve with your team members so that they feel that you are a part of the group. And as a leader, that is also your job, that you should be a part of the group. experience, inputs and field. So I just want to ask, Sir, uh, like, where do you strike the balance? How much, how much of it should be that you, you as an overall supervisor, you look into the things without yourself involving with your hands, as we say, getting your hands dirty? That is my first question, sir. And my second question is, sometimes, sir, as a leader, there is a lot of uh, assumption or a presumption, I should say, that a person who is, of a, who is of larger experience when it comes to, say, a sailing experience or something, he should be given a first faster chance to be in a senior role but is it necessary because those qualities or if he is of such potential where he can be given that opportunity that he can go ahead then should he not be considered for that role even though maybe his age is lesser in rank to somebody who is maybe senior to him when i am talking about so those are my two questions. So if okay. Any of our distinct panelists could just guide me on this. We I'll start, Anirban. Um, Anirban, yes, what is your goal as a, as a team leader or a manager? What is your goal? So for to accomplish the work in a safe and sound manner, keeping all the people happy within the definite timeline and framework of the system. Absolutely, Anirban. So, can you, as a manager alone, succeed? No, of course not. Isn't it? Definitely not. Definitely so, su not. so, success is all because of the team. And as a leader, right. you can bring the team together, show the team what is the goal. You have to facilitate the resources, what what should be available, 
and if 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 your team is see here also that, that micromanagement thing comes if you feel that the team is team requires your help and you know the way show them the way and lead the way you cannot stay behind and say oh no i will just watch and do nothing if they need you you have to provide those so so the team has to understand what is what are the objectives what are your goals and then bring them together and and make them uh, motivated because if you stay back and the team finds that they need something from you and you are not providing they will be demotivated they will not be able to achieve what they want right, right? thanks yes sir thank you sir thank you thanks sir so uh, uh, thank you very much every and each one for coming to our this gms webinar and gms team going forward also host more and more webinar on leadership as well what the actual topic in industry and thank you very much uh, uh, mr captain chawla thank you uh, mr kapoor and uh, gurvinda and uh, by end of the this uh, webinar we will send you our gratitude certificate from gmc for your valuable time you have shared with us valuable information and i am sure 100% this will benefit to our team leaders as well chief players thank you very much and have a nice day thank Take you care. for having me thank you thank you thanks dinner for inviting thank and you, thanks to the audience for listening thank you sir